Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. This module is Ectopic Pregnancy Part 2, where we'll go over the multiple ultrasound presentation of ectopic pregnancies. Ectopic pregnancy is one of those conditions that we'll not infrequently encounter in a busy EM practice. The most common presentation of an ectopic pregnancy will be an empty uterus with or without free fluid within the pelvic cul-de-sac or surrounding the uterus. We may be actually able to visualize the ectopic as a bagel sign which constitutes a thickened fallopian tube. Other presentations of ectopics include a complex pelvic mass with a ring of fire on Doppler sonography, hemosalpinx or blood within the fallopian tube, or we may be actually able to visualize the live ectopic in the adnexa with a fetal pole and or heartbeat. Here's a transvaginal long axis ultrasound from a woman who presented with lower abdominal pain and a positive pregnancy test. Notice the uterus, as shown in the long axis view, without an appreciable intrauterine pregnancy. And notice that it's surrounded by a large amount of free fluid, that dark or anechoic area surrounding the uterus both anteriorly to the left and posteriorly in the cul-de-sac to the right. That is the presence of fresh blood. Notice also the presence of blood clots anteriorly or to the left, that more echogenic area. So, given the absence of an intrauterine pregnancy, we decided to scan out to the adnexa and notice here the presence of a bagel sign of a tubal ectopic pregnancy. We see fresh fluid here above the bagel to the right, blood clot to the left, and the more hyperechoic or lighter bagel sign in the middle of the image. Occasionally it can be difficult to discern the bagel sign of a fallopian tube ectopic from an ovarian cyst as shown here to the right. But let's look closer at the two video clips and notice that the bagel sign has a more hyperechoic or brighter appearance with a single hole in the middle. Notice that the ovarian cyst has a different appearance with multiple small follicular cysts to the outer portion of the ovary and a single midline corpus luteum cyst, very different than the bagel sign. Here's another patient with an ectopic pregnancy and a different presentation of ectopic. We're scanning here from the more midline uterus, as shown there to the left, out to the right adnexa. And notice as we scan out to the right adnexa, we notice the presence of a complex pelvic mass. Notice also the relatively low serum beta HCG in this case, at 478. So a complex pelvic mass with an absence of an intrauterine pregnancy, very suspicious for an ectopic pregnancy. And what's interesting is, as we put Doppler flow on that complex pelvic mass, we notice the presence of the ring of fire, very suggestive of an ectopic pregnancy. And the reason for the ring of fire is that the ectopic pregnancy pulls a huge amount of vascularity towards it. And using the Doppler, we can see the separate ectopic from the ovary above it. Here's another presentation of an ectopic pregnancy. Again, we're scanning in a short axis plane, and we see here the uterus to the left, and outside the uterus, a separate structure. We note here the presence of a thickened fallopian tube, and inside the thickened fallopian tube, we see here a fetal pole with a heartbeat, consistent with a live ampullary ectopic pregnancy. Unfortunately, in this case, the presence of a fetal pole with a heartbeat is a contraindication to methotrexate therapy, and this patient will need to undergo surgery. We mentioned earlier that there are variants of ectopic pregnancies that implant outside the fundal region of the uterus in an aberrant location. This is a good example. This patient actually has a bicornate uterus, and as we scan in a short axis plane up the uterus, we notice the two limbs of endometrium that make up the two distinct cornea. As we go up the left cornea, we notice here the presence of a corneal ectopic pregnancy. And we see that it's located off to the side, way out to the left cornea, with a very thin myometrial mantle. If we actually put the calipers down and measure the endomyometrial mantle, we find it's very thin at 3 millimeters, defining an abnormal pregnancy. A normal pregnancy should have a myometrial mantle greater than 8 millimeters. Now this is a bicornate uterus, so this is a corneal pregnancy. In a normal uterus, this would be known as an interstitial pregnancy. So in conclusion, I'm glad I could share with you this module on ectopic pregnancy part 2, looking at the varied presentations of ectopic pregnancy. Hopefully now you better understand what we're searching for on bedside sonography when we're working up a patient with possible ectopic pregnancy. 
While visualization of the adnexa and fallopian tubes is an advanced technique, but it is well within the scope of a busy emergency medicine practice. As a final caveat, ectopic pregnancies can be seen at beta HCG levels ranging from very low, less than 100, to very high, above 20,000, and thus we cannot use a single beta HCG level to rule out ectopic pregnancy. It's really better to look at trends in this hormone level over time. With an intrauterine pregnancy, the level should double in 48 hours, whereas in most ectopic pregnancy, it will not climb to the same degree. So, I hope that now you have a better understanding of how to work up the pregnant patient with a possible ectopic pregnancy.